Hello guys, welcome to a brand new 10 video sponsored series where I will show you how to make a very cool sci-fi vehicle in 3ds Max 2023. So this video series is sponsored by Autodesk. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this and let's go ahead and get started. Now guys, before I show you any of the new tools in 3ds Max 2023, let's look at some of the old tools. Mainly, let's look at splines right here. So guys, I used 3ds Max for many years without using splines, at least of course, I always use them for piping and things like that, but actually they're very useful for hard surface objects as well. So before I get into the new tools, guys, let's just take a moment to appreciate splines. So what I'm gonna do is make some sort of mechanical arms. That's gonna be the first part of my vehicle. So let's go ahead and create, click on line right here. And so the way it works, guys, is that if you simply left click, you will start to create splines here. If you left click and hold, you will get a curve if you hold down shift, you can constrain to nine degrees right here. So you can easily do this like so. All right, now one thing I like to do to match things up is I'll right click to exit the spline creation. And then I'll go right here into the modify tab. I'll go into vertex and here's what you do. You wanna press S for snaps. You also can right click right here, make sure it's set to vertex. And then also if you go here, we have something called axis constraints. So the hotkey for that default hotkey is Alt D. So essentially guys, if you press S for snaps and Alt D, make sure that X axis is active. You can then simply left click and hold and look at that. We can actually conform it to this vertex right there. So once again, remember 3ds Max remembers your last saved direction axis, X, X, X and Z, Z, Z and Y or just Y. So all you have to do guys, for example, to match up this vertex with this one is simply just left click and hold. And there we go. Now it's lined up here. So then you can press Alt D for turning off axis constraints and S for turning off snaps. So I've got that spline set to shift one. So I press shift one and I just go into spline line mode. Shift two is circle. Shift three is rectangle. Shift four is just we're going into boxes. Shift five cylinders, shift six planes, shift seven spheres. So guys, let's go over some brief uh, design things to keep in mind. So in this video series, guys, I wanna pack as many tools, knowledge about tools, how to use the tools, and also how to design things as well. So one rule about design is that you don't wanna keep things consistent here. So one very boring thing is just this kind of box right here. So let's make it more interesting. Let's do that. Hold shift nine degrees, but now, Instead of just making it even, let's make it actually narrow down a little bit right here. All right. Shift nine degrees. All right. And then, all right, let's say I've got this right here. So when you're in this mode, if you press one right away, you just switch automatically to the modify tab and to vertex as well. Match this up. All right, next I'm gonna press Shift 2 for a circle. All right, how can I create a circle uh, right in between here? Well, we can activate, we can right click on here and use midpoint right here. And then as you can see, we're now starting with the midpoints of all of the spline segments here. So I can start right here. And then I can end right there. So as you can see guys, Studios Max just has some very nice spline and snap settings as well. All right, another very nice option about Studios Max is using trim. But before I trim, I'm going to go ahead and hold shift while scaling to make a copy of this. All right, I'm gonna select these objects. I'm gonna press Alt Q, that's the default hotkey for isolation. And we can also just press G real quick, just to turn off that grid, because when you have a lot of lines and grids going through, it get a little bit more complicated. So we're just gonna press G to turn off the grid temporarily. Okay, we're gonna select this object. And as you notice, when you start with a spline, it has all these options right here. However, with some primitive splines, as you notice, there are no options. We can't go into the vertices or anything like that. We have to go ahead and use edit spline. In fact, let's go ahead and set up a quick button for that. So we're gonna go into configure modifier sets. A lot of people ask me these kinds of questions. I think I covered it in one of my very early 3ds Max videos, but I think we could use a good refresher on that just for the new people. So I'll go into configure modifier sets. So right now I have 10 buttons here. Let's give ourselves 12 buttons. 
And so you can just look on the left right here. You can press, for example, ED to edit mesh, edit patch, edit poly, edit spline. There we go. We can just drag that right into here. All right. Spline chamfer is also another good one here. Actually, let's have spline mirror. So I'm going to enter in SP. All right. That gives us spline chamfer, spline mirror. In fact, let's give ourselves some more buttons here. Let's have spline mirror. Let's put that right there. And then we have spline chamfer. Let's put that right there. And let's also use normalize spline as well. And I'll show you why that could be useful. Click on OK. And here are our new tools. So if you start with the circle, guys, you need to go ahead and apply edit spline to give yourself all these tools right here. Now, guys, when I'm working with polygons here, I like to use lots of edit poly modifiers. That way I can put the new change on this edit poly. I can go on to this one. I can add some more changes here. And so now if I don't like it, I can just kind of delete that right there. I can also delete the center one. And although that's not recommended, it actually does work in many situations. So we can actually delete that one as well. So just as when I'm working with edit poly, I like to use lots of edit poly modifiers. When I'm working with geometry, when you use splines, you can use lots of edit spline modifiers. And that way, if you don't like what you've done, you can just delete it, delete it, and go back to the base right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this object or select this object and use edit spline. And what we can do, guys, is that we can actually attach these objects together. Next, we can go into spline and we can use, we can use trim right here to get rid of parts we don't want. So I don't want this line, so I'm gonna left click on that. I don't want this, I'm gonna left click on that, and there it goes. Right click to exit out of any kind of modes here. All right, but it will still be split up here. So we're gonna go into vertex, control A to everything, and we're just going to weld right here. Now, if you go into spline, you should notice it's all a single thing right here. All right, so if we go into the vertices, you can see we have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. Sometimes for different operations, you will want more vertices right here. So for that, you want to use normalize spline. In fact, let's go ahead and use that. And you can see what it does is if I apply edit spline on top, you can see how it tries to kind of give ourselves even vertices. So this can be very useful, for example, if you're creating wires. So let's say you create now, a wire like this and you just have you know these kinds of sparse control points here and maybe it's not enough to get the exact shape you want so you use normalized spline and a spline on top and look at that we have all of these control points once again 3ds max remembers which axes you use last so all i have to do guys is just left click and hold left click and hold you, you don't you don't have to select what i used to do is i just select and then left click on which axes I want. But remember, once you've got the ones you want, all I have to do, guys, is just left click and hold. You can very quickly adjust things like so. Alright guys, so sometimes the gizmo does kind of get in the way. So for example, if this is selected and I try and left click and hold, let's say I want to move the vertex next to it. We can see if I try and do it, it's just it just kind of keeps getting into that one. I kind of have to uh, deselect it first, which just kind of slows things down a bit. So let's go ahead and actually set up a hotkey for turning the gizmo off if necessary. Let's go into Customize Hotkey Editor. All right, so under Actions, let's just search up Gizmo. And actually here it is right here, Show Transform Gizmo, which I have set to F8. Now, a lot of times people end up accidentally turning it off, but it actually can be useful to turn it off sometimes. So when I press F8, as you can see, first of all, I'm going to make sure it's on so I can define which axes I want to work with. So Y and X. Now I'll press F8 to turn it off. Now I can just, guys, left click and hold. And so this kind of gives you a very nice fluid method for quickly selecting and moving things. So that is where normalized plan can be useful, guys. Give yourself a bunch of vertices. Now you have much more control over what you want to do. So that's how it can be used. All right. Next, we have spline chamfer, which just as the name implies, it will give us a chamfer and we can go ahead and use a mount right here. As you can see, it's being chamfered and this is all nice and procedural. So, you know, if we do edit spline here and we select this and we chamfer this or let's say fill it, this is not real time. You know, we have to actually delete this. So 
don't want to undo that, but with spline chamfer, we can just easily change it like so. We can also use 3S Max's nice stacking tools. So if you select these two vertices and then left click on spline chamfer, only those two will be affected. As you can see, not all other ones are being affected. If you want to get rid of this behavior, guys, simply go back to edit spline, deselect everything, or simply click here. As you can see, that little graphic right there indicates, so we're gonna go into vertex and then click that. So that little graphic indicates that it's using the stack beneath here. But if you go ahead and just click on edit spline, as you can see that graphic is gone, which means now all the vertices are being affected. So I very much like 3ds Max's intuitive system for stacking up details and only affecting certain things. Also works with segments. So if you select these segments and then click on spline chamfer, as you can see now only those segments are being affected. So this is one of those things that is very handy to know. All right. And we also have spline mirror as well. So we can click on spline mirror. We can then go into mirror. Oh guys, I've got the gizmo off. So I'm gonna press F8 to turn that on again. And so now I can move it like so. And now we have real time mirroring happening. If you want to actually see that, make sure you got this button pressed, show and result on of toggle. I've got that set of the space bar key. You can set up a hotkey for that. And so now we've got the kind of nice real time spine mirroring happening. And next we want to also have extrude. In fact, let's go ahead and add one more button here for extrude. And I'll just add slice here as well. All right, so extrude will take that and extrude it like so. But now you notice that spline mirror doesn't work anymore because that's only for splines, not for geometry. Once you extrude it, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and make this yellow because I'm making kind of a, a construction type vehicle. So I'm gonna use kind of a yellow color scheme. So before I set up materials, you can always, of course, use the object colors to define some basic color schemes. So what you can do actually, guys, is put extrude on top of spline mirror and then it'll work just fine here. All right, guys, so remember that circle spline that I hid previously. Well, let's exit isolation mode by pressing Alt Q again. Let's close off our grid and snap settings. So when I'm working, guys, I think it's a good idea just to keep this on here so you can quickly activate various snap settings. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. And so here's a nice thing, guys. So right now, you know, we're getting this result, but if we want a hole right here, all we have to do is just attach this and now we have a hole. So that is very simple. And I'm gonna undo that because I'm gonna go ahead and control V that first. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this down so it's not getting in the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach this one. All right, I will move this back. And I'm going to also apply extrude on this and we're gonna give this a dark gray object color. All right, at this point, we can turn off spline mirror and I'm gonna turn off extrude for now because I just wanna focus on these kinds of shapes. All right, guys, I wanna create some sort of crab arm here, some sort of mechanical crab arm. So first I'm gonna just kind of move this. So I'm moving this with the shown result on. So that allows me to see this right here. All right. What I'm going to do is to apply symmetry and I'm going to move that down a little bit and I'm going to decrease the value of this extrude. All right, I'm going to copy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna select extrude. I'm gonna hold down control or shift to add modifiers to my selection. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna delete extrude. I'm gonna paste them right here. That way we've got the same settings in terms of extrude and symmetry. So I very much like how in 3ds Max you can simply paste modifiers right here. And what you can even do guys is that you can paste them as an instance, which means if I go back here and I go into symmetry and I kind of move that around, you can see now that it's both following the same settings right here. And if I change extrude, it's going to keep up with it as well. So I very much like that also. All right, so I probably want to also have something right here. So what I'm going to do now is, let's see, copy this as well. 
All right, let's turn off Shrewd for now. And Symmetry as well. All right, so essentially I need to kind of work this out at this level. So I'm going to have, let's say, a forearm type area. So I want to have kind of a, a bicep type area, a forearm type area, and a claw right here. So still got that here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and copy this here. Decrease the radius. All right. All right, guys, I am going to create a line right here because I pretty much want this to overlap right here. So here I'm getting a slight curve, so I just need to be a little bit more careful when I'm clicking. Don't left click and hold down even a little bit, otherwise you get that curve. So just kind of be a little bit more careful with my clicks here. I'm just going to get this right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and use trim. So if you find yourself using trim a lot, remember you have to be in spline mode to use that. If you're in vertex or segment, as you can see, trim is not active. You have to be in spline. If you find yourself using trim a lot, you can go ahead and set that to a hotkey as well. So I'm going to trim that away, trim this away, trim this away, and I'm going to select everything and just do a quick weld. All right. See if I can move this a little bit here. All right. Copy this down here and I'm going to attach this. All right, guys, let's turn on the shoot and see trigger and see what we got. All right. So essentially what I'm trying to do here is just get a nice. Right now I'm working this in a very 2D way, so I'm just kind of looking at this and just looking at the top and seeing what kind of silhouette I have. So I'm just playing around with creating an interesting silhouette right here. I'm also thinking about positions where I can put eventually some sort of hydraulic cylinders as well. So I'm creating little spaces for hydraulic cylinders as well. If you're getting this kind of effect, you simply select your vertices, you right click and you do a corner and there we go. All right, I'm going to go into the mirror subject level. I'm going to move this further apart. All right. Let me turn off shoot for now. All right, so now what I need to do is to also do the same thing right here. Actually, for this, let's use the spline mirror. That's going to act as a very quick way for us to, you know, get rid of this effect right here. We're going to put a spline on top. We're going to go into the vertex level. We're going to delete this right here and delete that right there. All right. So here I've just kind of used my eye to kind of position this circle carefully over this one. But what if we want to be more careful and position it exactly? Well, we just turn on our snaps again, making sure we're using vertex, for example. And we hover over this vertex and we snap to that one right there. And I'm going to select these vertices and move them right here just to make this a little bit shorter here and then I will delete these vertices. All right, there we are. All right, we'll go back here, we'll select the spline and we will go ahead and detach it. So we're gonna click on copy, detach it and now we will have a copy of the object right here. So we can extrude that as well. Or rather, I will copy these settings here and apply them to this one. 
and change the object color as well. All right, guys, we don't have that many objects here, but I showed you some good information that you can now use to work with splines faster, and that will speed up our workflow for the future videos. Thank you for watching and take care.